I have an understanding of ecological reparation and ecology in general very wide. Uh, a wider landscape uh, that includes uh, space, uh, human beings and non-human beings and objects and a, a very materialistic understanding of ecology. And uh, reparation, I think, has to do uh, with a continuous process, right? I mean, like we have continuous disruption, we have continuous ruptures. Uh, and we, we see them on a daily basis, right? Like we see them like in our own lives, we see them like around us and uh, ecological reparation with them, uh, a concept becomes like a necessity, right? Like an urgency. And it's something that we actually do every day. We all participate into a process of ecological reparation. So while you repair, there are more things that come to be disrupted again. So you need to intervene again and again. We look at things disrupted, we try not to get too demoralized and desperated <laughs> out of, the, of these disruptions and we try to act. We try to also to resist actually uh, in relation to these kind of uh, predicaments of these kind of situations that we live. Uh, Rima flow, which is uh, something that uh, you describe in your work. So can you tell us what is uh, uh, Rima flow and why uh, did you go there? Well, Rima flow is a recuperated factory uh, in the north of Italy. Uh, the name already says quite a lot about it because like it's got these two letters in front of its name, Rima flow. Uh, and re uh, in Italian as much as in English, even though it's spelled differently, is this idea of uh, a new beginning, uh, of a new opening, let's say. You know? uh, obviously, the story is uh, quite common to many other factories in terms of the first part, so the closure of a factory. Uh, but what is exceptional about Dream of Flow uh, is the fact that yeah, actually there is a new beginning after the closure. So Maflo was a, was a factory in the north of Italy. Uh, it closes around 10 years ago, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, obviously, like, uh, in all these kind of circumstances, we experience, like, very similar kind of uh, situations. Like, uh, uh, people are off work, uh, the factory closed down, and obviously, like, the factory is usually, depending on the size, is usually a big piece of the community as well. So also the ecology or the wider ecology is not just the factory, right? It's the factory, the materials involved, the other companies that are related to that factory, the people that, that work in there, the people that work around it, and also their families. So it's a, it's, it's a wider uh, disruption when you have like a closure of a factory of that kind. Um, what they did, I think is extraordinarily simple to an extent, and extraordinarily uh, complex and revolutionary as well. What happens when a, fa uh, when a factory closes is that like, what is the element that disappears? The element that disappears is, is just the money, basically. It's just capital. What remains instead is the space, so the, the factory itself, the premises of the factory, the people, and often the machinery as well. So the question is, can you continue production uh, of course you can, if you have like means of sustaining it financially. Uh, and, and, but even if you don't have those means, like it's, uh, it's interesting how, uh, in this experience, you see how they try anyway. And, uh, what, by trying, they actually repair the connection that they had with the factory and that works. Now we are, it's a uh, Rima flow is going on for eight years. So it's a durable enterprise, a durable uh, uh, cooperative. What I find really uh, interesting is exactly this way of uh, perceiving their own relation between themselves with the factory and with the wider community and with the wider ecology in a completely different way. In a way that needs to be invented as well, because like we're not used to it, right? Like we're used to working in a specific organization with specific hierarchies. So working in a completely different uh, uh, way means also trying to uh, get in tune with that potential that we all have in relation to organizing, but with that we all, all, all we never really get in touch with. 
I was wondering about the link between, you know, reparation, recuperation, and, and kind of looking to the past. So there is something there about recuperating things from the past in an act that is happening in the present. And I wanted to ask you, you know, what do you think about that? The, in the normal understanding of the words, like a re reparation, it basically brings something back to its original form. So something is broken and you need to put it back together. If it's an object, it's, if it's a tool, uh, that's what you basically do, you know, like you repair it. Like, so it means like it works again, theoretical, more than practical to understand it. But uh, it's, it's not going back to a time that was awful anyway. I mean, like working in a factory with a with a capitalist owner uh, that exploits basically your work uh, is not the past you want to go back to. Uh, what you want to go back to is to a past that you possibly never experienced, uh, but it's a past in which like these kind of uh, uh, hierarchies, power relations and exploitation were not existing. And this is more of a logical hypothesis. And I, and I reconnected this with like a, I did, I did some work on the idea of the primacy of resistance, the fact that resistance comes before power and comes before power even in a temporal, logical uh, way. So it says that before that power intervenes, there was a time of, uh, of solidarity, equality and freedom uh, that we possibly have not experienced. We have possibly have no historical record, but it must have been there. And I think that past, uh, which I would call a sort of revolutionary past, a lost dimension that we need to repair and to recuperate is actually what we try to bring in the, to build and reconstruct in the future or in the present, actually. So in the present as a movement like uh, that actually uh, try to recover that dimension, but also like a, a future in which like a disruption will not happen again, which is again a bit like utopistic, but like a, at least trying to connect uh, this distant past, which is not the past of the closure, which is not the past where the factory was like run uh, in a capitalist way, but reinventing a past within the present in order to create a future of mutualism and solidarity. Proliferation of re is actually like uh, something that is very evident in Rimaflow because like you, that's like the first image you find when you arrive there. Uh, or when I arrived there, I mean, like there was this massive banner in which like there were this series of keywords where re was repeated several times. It's really interesting that it's something like uh, that is happening now historically uh, in many social movements, in many uh, discussion over social movements of radical theories. And uh, yeah, it does mark a difference uh, with, uh, with the previous decades. I, I, I think like a, a one way of understanding it is uh, to put it into the connection with like uh, what we experience in not just in the last decades, but what we keep experiencing a bit, uh, which is like a logical, not just a logic, like a, an experience of degradation, an experience of ecological degradation, of the ecological destruction, which is a time of despair as well. I think despair is like the other big word that needs to be analyzed in relation to repairing. Uh, we have in relation to the potential of transforming things. So the potential for uh, reactivating that potential for emancipation, that potential for creating an ecology that is sustainable, cre um, avoiding to go through those lines of despair. Uh, so I think like the re is like, a, is trying to have a new beginning, but it's not just a beginning, it's a beginning that reconnects with what we've been doing uh, from the past, that is not just like a destructive, it's not just like degradation, it's, try, it's trying to recover those lines of emancipation or radical thinking or radical action. How do you approach resistance? And perhaps in the second step, how do you connect reparation and resistance? Is reparation a form of resistance? Words, resistance and repair, uh, it would be interesting like to break them and so separate them from the re and see what's left on the other side. So repairing and resistance. Uh, obviously, resistance like, has a completely different etymology, and it's a very static kind of etymology. Really sister, it has to do with like staying. But if we rethink this etymology as uh, re-existence, 
So connecting the idea that you can renovate existence, uh, it changes completely the perspective of what you can have uh, uh, in relation in the relation between resistance and power. So in my work, what I've been trying to do is like to try to explore how resistance relates to power, uh, not just in terms of opposition. If we have to repair, that means that the pair was not there anymore. And for pairing, I understand like any kind of positive form of connection, which is not a power relation, but is another form of relation, a form of positive relation. And when we have a pair that has been separated, uh, repairing is like putting those things back together. I think resistance is the moment in which we reconnect two things that have been separated that can be like uh, beings with their ecologies or workers and their factories, in my example. And instead of staying with the despair, staying with the desperation of the separation, Resistance is what activates this movement of reparation, of trying to put in back things together, trying to coupling again things that were separated. So I think this is the relation between resistance and repair. And this is the idea of renovation, so renovating an existence, renovating a coupling, but also creating new forms of coupling, creating new forms of uh, potential transformational uh, pairings.